Let's conclude our look at mental disorders by examining autism and schizophrenia, which are two of the most troubling of the mental disorders. We're going to look at some evidence that comes from genetic copy number variants. Then we'll examine the Crespi-Badcock hypothesis, which uh, is generated by cases of rare mutations that cause mental disorders, but which they generalized. Then we'll look at a meta-analysis of copy number variation, and at size at birth is a marker of risk for autism and schizophrenia. The insight that led to the Crespi-Badcock hypothesis came from David Haig's comments on the contrast between Angelman and prader willi syndrome. These are generated by deletions and uh, duplications of genes. In fact, these are generated by deletions that produce copy number variation. Deletions of genes that are imprinted differently in mother or father produce behavioral syndromes that contain clues to broader mental disorders. So Angelman and prader willi are deletions of genes that are imprinted differently in mother or father. When the maternally inherited copy of a region of chromosome 15 is deleted, allowing the paternally inherited copy to be expressed unimpeded by maternal influence, the result is Angelman syndrome. Angelman babies demand suckling, cry frequently, they're hyperactive, they sleep very little, they tend to be very happy, and they have a high risk, 40 to 80 percent, of autism. So this high risk of autism is associated with overexpression of paternal interest, unimpeded by maternal genes. When the paternally inherited copy of the same region is deleted, allowing the maternally inherited genes to be expressed unimpeded, the result is prader willi syndrome. prader willi infants suckle poorly, cry weakly, are inactive and sleepy, and have high risk, 30 to 70 percent, of psychoses which includes schizophrenia. So when maternal interest is overexpressed, unimpeded by paternal resistance, the result is an infant that doesn't ask for very much parental investment and is at high risk of psychosis. So similar patterns of deletion in two other regions produce similar contrasts in autism versus psychosis. This led to the Crespi-Badcock hypothesis. It sees uh, the, a spectrum ranging from hypermentalism, which is psychosis, through a normal area to hypomentalism, which they define as autism. If there is maternal bias, then with small deviations in this direction, you have less demanding offspring and lower birth weight, and larger deviations lead to psychotic type behavior. Deviations in the autistic direction are caused by paternal bias in gene expression. Smaller deviations lead to more demanding offspring, higher birth weights, longer gestation times. Larger deviations lead to autistic type behavior. This explanation is seen as being layered onto the effects of non-imprinted genes and onto environmental effects. So maternally biased imprints are seen as part of a multi-causal explanation of psychosis and paternal imprints are seen as part of a multi-causal explanation of autism. So in this view, autism and psychosis are seen as opposite extremes in the social brain. If the human social brain is overdeveloped, it leads to schizophrenia, bipolar syndrome, and depression. That's associated with auditory hallucinations, megalomania, paranoia, delusion, major depression or elation, thought disorders, and mania. Underdevelopment, leading to autism, can lead to people who cannot speak, who have a reduced sense of self, no mentalistic skill, that means very little ability to understand what's going on in other people's heads, very basic emotions, mechanical logic, and no goal pursuit. So this syndrome is seen as varying along a spectrum. There is some support for this uh, that comes from a, a meta-analysis of copy number variation. So this was carried out by Cresby and his colleagues. 
One meta-analysis of 18 papers found a significant and striking contrast of deletions and duplications in chromosomal region 1Q21.1. Deletions raise the risk of schizophrenia, and duplications raise the risk of autism. So this is a highly significant contrast in risks of mental disease where you have copy number variation in the same region of a chromosome. They did seven such analyses. Four, including that one we just saw, revealed diametrically opposed reciprocal risk. That supports the idea that autism and schizophrenia are in some sense opposite ends of a single dimensional spectrum. However, in two, in two of these four, deletions raise the risk of schizophrenia and duplications raise the risk of autism. In two of those four, deletions raise the risk of autism, duplications raise the risk of schizophrenia. So we're getting this diametrically opposed effect. However, in the other three regions, uh, there was no such contrast. So copy number variation contributes to risks of autism and schizophrenia, but that's not the whole story. For each of those also has other causes. When a mother's interests are overexpressed, infants tend to be born smaller and earlier. When the father's interests are overexpressed, infants are born larger and later. We can contrast Angelman, which leads to paternal bias, with Prodder Willie, which leads to maternal bias, and Beckwith Wiedemann, which leads to paternal bias, with Silver Russell, which leads to maternal bias. An analysis of 1.75 million births in Denmark between 1977 and 2009 showed that infants with these syndromes of paternal bias were heavier at birth and had longer gestation periods than infants with syndromes of maternal bias. If the imbalance in parental transcripts that influenced size at birth was expressed in the brain, we would expect size at birth to be associated with risk of mental disorder. This, in fact, is the risk of mental disorder in that population in Denmark. These are 1.75 million people. The bars here in the histograms are the numbers of births, and you'll notice that they're going up to a factor of, this would be 100,000. So this is about 100,000 births here. And this is relative risk. So you can see that the relative risk of psychosis is much higher for infants that are small and much smaller for infants that are born large. The relative risk of autism is very high for infants that are born large. It drops and then it rises again in very, very small infants. So there seems to be something about very small brains which is resetting the circuitry uh, in, for, for both kinds of disease. So to summarize, in, in this lecture, we've looked at the connection between genomic conflict and mental disorders, and it's made by inferring the imbalance of genetic transcripts that influence behavior that's nor usually normal and healthy. Autism and schizophrenia are not thought to be selected, but they are to be thought to be pathological byproducts of the disruption of an equilibrium that usually results in normal children. This interpretation is supported both by the contrast of rare monogenic diseases, such as prader willi and Angelman, in which either the maternal or the paternal chromosome is deleted, and is also uh, supported by the association of birth weights with disease risk in an entire country. The portion of variation in risk of autism and schizophrenia that's accounted for by this sort of explanation, genomic conflict, is probably not more than 20-25%. So this is interesting and it's only a part of the story.